This is a PI Advice Podcast. What's going on? I think uh, through all the the trials that I've had today uh, and all the money that I've spent on uh, these uh, gadgets here for this uh, podcast, yeah, I think we're actually rocking it. So let me turn on this music here because uh, I need to get used to doing this on my own. I don't have a uh, I don't have a crew helping me out. Yeah, I mean, I'm I was looking for my Pride Investigator Advice podcast shirt and uh gosh man you know i only wear it like when i'm making videos or you know i I don't rock it around town or anything but uh i thought man well i'm doing a live video broadcast right now and i'm recording it and i'm figuring man you know the least i could do is have a have my have my shirt on but of course i can't find it and i've probably spent two hours prepping just to not on the actual show but um on uh just trying to get the video ready yeah, but whatever, man. That's just how it goes sometimes. Um, oh, yeah. So I'm dropping my notes and everything, smacking my head around. Hey, yeah. I'm sorry. If this, this is your first introduction to the Privacy Advice Podcast. <laughs> I'm trying to expand here. So, uh, you know, if, welcome. By the way, uh, I'm glad you're with us. Um, you know, if the audio levels are too high, I'm. This is a work in progress. I bought a a, a soundboard or a mixer. Uh, a, head, a stereo head amplifier. Um, I, you know, I, I spent too much money, is what I did. But, anyways, welcome. This is a this is a this is a podcast for for that guy who and gal who's uh, trying to figure out if this is the right occupation for him. Um, you know, and if it is, I'm going to try to help you at least guide you into uh, getting your job if that's what you want to do as a private investigator. Um, it's also for that private investigator who's probably working for that. A nationwide company or that mom and pop place where you know it's it maybe they're at a crossroads of either you know uh, am I going to get better at this or am uh, am I going to move on and uh, and if you're a new business owner you know I, I don't have all the answers I, I've I'm about two years into it and um, you know I, I haven't done as much as I possibly could um, because I just have other things going on but I, I can probably get you to at least the point that I'm at so uh, with that being said welcome and uh, I'm excited to start doing these things live now, and uh, not only live, but just actually uh, recording them, so um, you guys can kind of see my responses when I'm talking. I don't know. If you like it, great. Let me know. If you don't, that's cool, too. I understand. So, uh, but anyways, um, so, uh, yeah, this, uh, gosh, I I think I haven't been on the mic as often as I, uh, uh, well, it's been about 10 days or something. I'm not sure. It's just been longer than normal. And uh, business started to pick up, and I'm kind of glad because, um, uh, you know, I always talk about it when my funds were running low. So uh, even though even though the work does come, it's, you know, it's funny because I might not see a check another, for a month or two, depending on the client that I work for, the other company that I work for. Um, and the, uh, the company I'm actually employed with, I haven't seen work from in going on over a month, and I'm just with them part-time. So, uh, you know, that's what happens when you're part-time, you... Uh, you don't get the if any work's coming in. You don't get the uh, the main stuff, and and that's fine. That's kind of what I expected. So, but uh, you know, three or four days a week that that's going to keep me going. Um, you know, I, one of the one of the things I've been wanting to mention. It's kind of embarrassing, and uh, it's it's something as a as a business owner you have to be on the ball regardless of what's going on, and and that's. Uh, when you get a call from a client or a, a potential client, um, you know when they're they're calling about your services and just maybe they want to know what you can you do this or what what are you charging for this, um, you got to get back to them pronto, amigo, because if you don't get back to them like within the next ten minutes, they've already called five people and you know I was told this by another friend of mine who is a small business owner and, and I believe him. I mean this actually you know I <laughs> I remember one client in particular. He had called because he wanted me to locate, I guess it's a long story, but it was from a, a, a country overseas who was trying to locate a missionary's family uh, over here on the west coast of, uh, of the United States. 
and uh, he wanted to know if I could do it. And I'm like, yeah, I could probably do it, and this is what is probably going to run you. But oh, anyways, before I go into that, he had called, and um, I probably waited about 15 minutes, and I happened to be on the phone with my friend, and um, he said, um, I had called him back. I'm like, yeah, I just got a call from this guy. He wants this, you know, such and such to happen. He wants me to find such and such. Um, and he's like, well, dude, you better call him. You better call him right now, because if you don't, he's already called six other companies, <laughs> you know, and sure enough, you know, I called him right back, and I call, and I talked to him, he's like, yeah, I called X, Y, and Z company, <laughs> and I'm like, yep, he sure did, and that's really kind of how it goes, you know, um, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna try to get bids, or, or, you know, from as many companies as you can, just like you would, like, you know, if you hire a, a guy to do cement, you know, the cement in the front of your house, you're gonna hire, or at least call three or four or five guys to get bids, you know, and, and try to fill them out like, okay, is this guy any good or is he good at what he does? Does he have referrals? Whatever. Um, so anyways, that's the moral of the story is uh, get back to your client in a timely manner. I actually uh, I got a call the other day and um, I was in the middle of something and then I forgot, you know, you just kind of go, you know, it, it's important. Yeah, you want to call, but I, I've got so many other things going on. I'm working to other cases and next thing I know, I uh, I go to call him back and, you know, I said, hey, I'm, you know, I'm sorry I'm getting back to you so late. Um uh, you know, but hey, if you still need help with something, let me know. Um, you know, I'll be more than happy to help you. I'm sure you know. Basically, I said I'm sure you've called some other companies during this time. It's only been like a day, but um, it only takes a day. You know, uh, so yeah, get get on. If they call you at nine o'clock at night, call them back, man. I mean, especially if you're low on work. Um, and you know, I, I think I think sometimes I take that for granted. Um, you know, I kind of I'm kind of too choosy sometimes. Um, and I don't get back to people in time, and um, it's a bad business practice, so don't do that. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, uh, uh, eBooks. You know, I'm always talking about that every week because I always see uh, I have a sponsor of uh, Audible.com, um, and uh, I did that uh, that other book. Uh, it's called Rework. And with with Rework, um, I think Red Post. It was a really good book. Um, but uh, I'm waiting to find. Out. I have people I listen to, and I want to hear what they're reading. And I mean, lately. Um, so I ended up just getting the book out. And it's had some reviews in that regard. It's called E Myth Revisited Why Most Small Businesses um, Don't Work and What You Can Do About It. And so I had a ton of reviews, and I think I had like four and a quarter stars. So that's what I'm going to read right now. Read some parenting books if I can find a good one. Um, I just don't want to listen to any parenting book, and I know that doesn't really apply to private investigation, but. Um, you know, I do another podcast, American Dad Podcast, and so, uh, you know, I'm always interested in what other dads have to say or what other parenting people have to say, and I like to compare it to what I'm doing, and you know, I don't think everybody's right. If anything, I always think I'm right, so I like to see what other perspectives are out there. Um, but yeah, um, needless to say, uh, that's what I'm doing, and you know, if you guys are interested in the ebook thing, um, you know, I've, I've actually received messages from other um, investigators out there that, you know, in fact, one of the po- reasons I did that, that whole podcast, uh, podcast about podcasts, um, is because he says, yeah, I listen to uh, uh, ebooks too, audiobooks on Audible, and, um, you know, so uh, uh, for you guys out there, first of all, if, if you have any books that you're listening to on Audible and you think that I might want to read them, Dude, drop me a line. I, I mean, I've got credits building up now because if you don't if you don't remember, uh, I I started getting two credits a month because I was going through these books so fast. Uh, and I was going through them like in two days. I'm like, well, crap. You know, what am I going to listen to now? Um, anyways, but if you have a good book, let me know. Facebook me, message me, whatever. It, it's all good. Um, but Audible has a has a uh, free trial, thirty day trial. Get a basically get a free book. Sign up for Audible. And uh, and you get this free book, and if you don't like it at the end of the 30 days, you can cancel it like the day after you get the book. It doesn't matter. You still get to keep the book. Um, and I listen to it on my iPhone. I think you have, they have all the apps that you need on your phone to listen to it on your phones. And, and I listen to it on my way to work. In fact, i got to drive two and a half hours to work tomorrow, which sucks. But um, <laughs> anyways, uh, Audible's got a, has got a, a promotion going on, and you can go uh, let's see the... Uh, the uh, free offer there is uh, uh, audibletrial.com forward slash PI advice podcast. Or you can just go to my uh, private investigator advice hq.com website and go to resources. And there's a little banner there. You can click on that and you're going to get a good deal on that too. So uh, that is my plug for the day. I cannot stress audible enough. 
um, or podcasts, you know, for that matter. So anyways, glad, uh, and again, glad you guys are listening today. So moving on, um, you know, I've got like these topics, you know, it's like you do these podcasts for so long and you, you tend to forget what you've talked about and, and I don't want to listen to all my podcasts again just to figure out, you know, uh, what I've said and, and, uh, you know, I don't want to talk over myself and be like, oh, this guy talks about the same thing every time. Uh, I don't want to be that guy. But um, I, I, a lot of the things I'm going to be doing now is, you know, I think I have I, I think I have three types of basic listeners. Uh, you know, you got the auto, you know, people want to listen to me on the podcast. Um, I got uh, a ton of followers on, on my YouTube videos. Um, and I think people just like to watch videos there. You know, that's that's how they like to learn. They like to see it happen or they like to see me talk about it. Um, you know, people, some people don't want to, don't want to mess with that stuff. They just want to hear it and they just want to consume it, you know, that way. Or maybe, you know, they don't have time to mess around with the videos. So that's why they're listening to me in the first place on the, on the podcast. Uh, and other people are digging the reading. They like to read what I write. And, um, you know, I, I think I've come a long way over the past year in regards to my writing. My, my wife says it's okay. I think she's just saying that cause she's my wife, but, um, you know, there's some good stuff in there too. But you know, it's the thing is, I wasn't doing. Um, I wasn't. You know, I'd be writing something, and then I'd be doing a video on something else, and I'd do a podcast on something else. When I could be doing all three of those, so you know, the people. You know, yeah, it might be redundant. The people who read it might be getting it. You know, I might add something on a video, or they, I might add something on a podcast. I just get a little bit extra, but um, you know. Anyways, I'm just trying to reach more people with, with some of the content that I have. And, and so that's you might see a lot of that where I'm doing uh, it three times. It might seem like I'm doing it three times, but, um, you know, I'm just trying to make sure everybody gets the same stuff because not everybody listens to it, you know, or could, takes in what I do the same way. So as you can see, so I'm doing a podcast and I'm videoing it at the same time. Um, but anyways, so I got some great questions this week. Um, I, I talked to, you know, I've talked about, you know, what – or and I've written about, you know, you're, if you're looking for a private investigator job and what you can do to get it, and I wrote some blog posts early on in, in, in uh, 2012 um, that helps cover some of that stuff, like how to prepare for it, you know, what, what do you need to have ahead of time. And uh, so uh, an example, let's see here, one sec, um, is he wanted to know, you know, hey, he's like, hey, Andrew, I need to know how to prepare for, an interview, and so um, I can't remember if he was actually writing that on my post that I had written about preparing for <laughs> investigations, but, um, you know, obviously, one of the main things I always say to everybody is um, have equipment, you know, um, you know, some people, you know, when they go through the interview process, and I've been on that side where I was interviewing, it's like, uh, okay, well, do you have a camera? No. Okay. Uh, do you have a laptop? No, I don't have that. And they're like, well, I'll get it if you hire me. Well, from my point of view as a hire, and not everybody's like me, but I'm just that guy that's, I'm so nitpicky anyways, right, when it comes to stuff like that. I'm not nitpicky with everything, but when it comes to hiring people, I was I was super anal. But it's like, you're telling me you're going to hire, you're going to buy that stuff, but how do I know you're going to actually do it? Like, you know, I don't know that you're going to buy that stuff after I hire you. Then I'm in a pickle. You know, I've got to figure out, okay, well, you know, uh, how is this guy going to go out and, and do the job, right? Um, so, yeah, obviously have some equipment, okay? And I, and I have I list equipment all through my website. I'm always talking about equipment. Um, another thing is, you know, and, I, and I, I've done a podcast on this and I've uh, written about it, and it's know the lingo, know the verbiage. Um, you know, moving automobile surveillance. I mean, these, these are really simple things, but uh, pretexting, um, privacy laws or uh, claim it you know these little they're not huge words i mean but if you're having a conversation with somebody when you you know if you refer to them a way that doesn't sound right to the owner or to the manager then they're, they're gonna they're gonna know you're faking the funk like well this guy really doesn't know what he's talking about um you know so keep that in mind um know the lingo uh and, I, and going on know some of the laws now i don't know all the private investigation laws and i want to write this big blog article on them, and, and I've, I've actually got to go back and go, okay, well, I, I know the, the premise of these laws, like, well, don't do this, don't do that, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to have to dig deeper into these laws again, just so I can tell you, okay, well, this is why we don't do this, this is why we don't pretext represented claimants, 
or this is why we don't videotape into the windows of somebody's home, you know, because of this privacy law, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't hurt to know some of the laws, and it's going to keep you out of trouble if you get hired anyway. So, so you know, know the laws. Know the law. Um, let's see here. Um, what else did I write here? Oh, uh, have, you know, obviously have some work experience or in your resume that's kind of like, look, this is what I've done. I've gone to college. I've spent $40,000 on education because I want to be a private investigator. Uh, actually, my long-term goal is to do yada, yada. Um, but, you know, have some have some experience or something showing your your client or your uh, your future person that's going to hire you that, hey, that I'm trying. I'm trying to, you know, I've been trying to get into this job. Uh, and that might have been because, you know, hey, this guy Andrew on the Private Security Advice podcast told me, be in loss prevention. So I went and did that. Or, you know, um, take courses. And he told me to do all this stuff. So this better work, darn it. <laughs> so... Uh, another thing is, is when you're, when you get into the interview, um, don't start making demands on your future employer. Be like, don't go, I can't work Fridays, I can't work Saturdays, I can't work Sundays, I can only work from 8 to 5, um, and because my son's got soccer practice, nobody cares. I care, I know that feeling, because I've been in this industry so long, but that employer does not want to hear you go, um, yeah, I can't work after 5 you got to be that guy that's just like, they can take the phone call at, you know, at 7 o'clock that day in the morning and go, I need you to head out to this case. This client needs somebody out there at this appointment. Uh, and you got to be, yep, yes, sir, I'll be right there. Um, you know, yeah, and it sucks, but again, and, and don't don't lie to him either, because if you lie and be like, yeah, I can do all that, and then you can't do it, then he's going <laughs> to, you're done, you're, you're not going to work. He's going to be like, screw you. Um, but yeah, you got to be flexible, and it's just it's just a good thing to have in your mind about being flexible the rest of your career as a private investigator because that will have to happen all the time. You know, when you start at six o'clock in the morning, it took you an hour to get there, and then uh, then you, you you just you know you're doing really well and you're following this guy and he just keeps going from place to place to place. The next thing you know, he's at some building and now it's ten o'clock at night and you've worked a you know you know twelve hour plus day, um, you know yeah, you're getting some great hours, but you didn't expect that to happen, and, and you need to have a contingency plan, like, well, who's picking up my kids, and uh, I'm sorry, wife, I can't, you know, be there for dinner on time, so uh, keep that in mind. So um, what was the other thing? Oh, interview. So also, obviously, when you get to the interview, um, you know, a lot of people require different things, like, uh, let's you know, I, I remember I, I, I interviewed, I went through the whole process with, I'll just say the, the company, G4S, right? Um, and one of the first things, other than, I mean, th I was basically um, a former way, <laughs> signing one form to, to go fly over to, I think it was North Carolina or South Carolina or something like that, uh, to go over there and, and start doing their training and all that kind of stuff. But one of the requirements was on the first day to have a suit. Um, at least that's what they said. And I actually followed up with a guy who works there at G4S and he says, well, you could just got to dress pretty professional. Um, but with that being said, don't come to your interview, and this, and I, I don't even know why I'm really having to say this, but don't come to your interview dressed in jeans and a t-shirt and a ball cap and unshaven. Dude, clean up, because, um, you, you know, you're not always just going to be doing surveillance. You're going to be talking to clients, and you're going to be uh, interviewing people. And that's just so, you know you gotta be you gotta be like look I can I can clean yeah I can do the surveillance and be all scruffed up and that's just you know wearing my t-shirt and shorts on surveillance, but you gotta be ready to um, be, be able to rock the the polo and uh, some some khaki pants and some nice dress shoes or some slacks, so clean up you know for that interview and um, it's gonna go a long way and and be prepared uh, oh, that was another thing no or do some investigation on the company I don't mean like in a bad way, but like learn about the company that's hiring you. Know some background, at least attempt to. I mean, some of them it's like uh, there's this big company umbrella and there's all these little small companies underneath it. That's going to happen, but uh, I still remember this day where I, I interviewed for a, uh, this is several years ago now, I interviewed for a loss prevention territory supervisor position. Um, I was trying to branch away from uh, private investigation, and um, I remember he goes, well, 
can you tell me about the company? I'm like, absolutely. Uh, the company was founded by so-and-so. Um, and after such and such amount of years, he, you know, sold it to so-and-so. And, -so. and I, I knew all this about the company. And the guy, like, when I was done telling about the company of what I had researched, he's like, we kind of paused for a second. He's like, uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and so there was, uh, there was nothing he could tell me. I mean, I think that's something that he usually caught people on, but I was prepared for it. Um, but it was just interesting that it, it, people care about that. My wife interviews people all the time, not necessarily for private investigation, but for her job, she interviews people all the time. And, you know, if, if someone's not willing to learn about the company they might be working for for the next 10 years, then maybe they really don't want the job. So keep, keep that in mind. All right. So uh, let's move on from there. I've, uh, I've really uh, gone out of my way to talk about surveillance vehicles today, and I wrote a post a long time ago, uh, post number 26, Surveillance Vehicles for Private Investigators, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Um, so I'm not going to read this verbatim because I actually wrote a lot. It actually took me quite a while to compile my information and, and my thoughts on all the vehicles. But uh, what I'm going to do is I got some uh, pictures up on this thing, and, and I hope this comes through like I wanted to. So what I got, so I, I, I'm going to go over some vehicles. And I'm going to talk about, like, well, you'll see. I'll tell you what. For those of you at home bear, or, you know, that are listening on the road, I'm going to try to be as uh, vocal about, you know, and descriptive about what I'm doing on the video um, so uh, you can kind of, you know, get the feeling of what I'm going through. So so the first thing is the uh, the Dodge Neon. Now, I, uh, I picked the Dodge Neon because I actually just photographed it in some parking lot in town and uh, this vehicle is actually a really good surveillance vehicle uh, in my opinion it's got good gas mileage um, you know it's uh, everybody's seen a neon around it's not some unique vehicle um, but uh, one of the things I'd be concerned about is uh, well first of all the height of it if if, if you do surveillance for any amount of time um, you, you know how hard it is. As soon as that person that you're following gets in between some vehicle, or the, some vehicles get between you and the person you're following, it becomes extremely hard to, uh, especially when bad weather conditions happen, rain, all that mist flies up from the tires, you can't see your your person anymore, and it is extremely frustrating. Um, so in that regards, uh, I don't like the smaller vehicles, the Honda Civics, the, the Neons, or, or anything comparable that you can think of. Um, so... That's kind of my skip on that. The, one of the other things I liked, I did like about it, because I used to roll around the Honda Civic when I first started in the, my career here. Um, it was the gas mileage, man. I could, man, I made buku bucks off of mileage um, from the companies I worked for because I got such great gas mileage in my car that I could, you know, drive a ton of miles and I got a lot of money back, you know, on one tank. And the, you know, back then it wasn't three, four dollars a gallon either, but it's still, I mean, something to consider. So, you know, if you uh, if you decide to get uh, one of those, if you you know, if you're in the market for a surveillance vehicle, you know, uh, those smaller vehicles are great, you know, but that's just one of the things you have to battle is that I can't see over other vehicles problem. Um, also, you know, you, you're depending on how big a guy you are, you're kind of limited to the front seat of the vehicle because for anybody, let's say 200 and above. <laughs> I know it's like a blanket statement, but this is just from my experiences. It is very difficult to, to jump from the front, the back of the seat to the front to the back, whatever. Uh, it's tough. Um, also, in this picture, you'll see that, um, uh, well, this has no tint on this picture, uh, but it's burnt orange, which is a horrible color for surveillance because it's going to stick out like a sore thumb when you go to places. So if your subject's even remotely uh, interested in your vehicle, like looking at it, then he's going to remember that orange color. Uh, you want to get some earth colors. That, for all vehicles, that's my suggestion, just get some earth colors. Um, you know, white and black are not the best colors um, for surveillance vehicles. Um, and I've, I've, had, I've had the black surveillance vehicle with a black tent, and uh, it is, it's horrible. It is horrible. Uh, I mean, it's great for me. Like, no one can see me. I've got the limo tent all the way around. But you sit in a neighborhood with your black vehicle and your black tent, and I don't care where you are, someone's either going to think you're a cop or you're a bad guy. So uh, that, that's my advice on that. That's like a blanket statement for all the cars we look at going forward. Um, and also, 
um, you know, the smaller your car is, the, the, the shallower it is, I should say, um, the more light can penetrate kind of like towards the back of the car. So if light's shining through your front window, um, or if you don't have tint that's limo on your, on your you know, passenger and your driver's side and your rear and all, you know, all the way to the back, um, it's going to, you're going to see silhouettes of people inside the vehicle. Um, so keep that in mind for the smaller vehicles. Uh, what else is I going to say about that? Ah, we'll move on. I'm sure I'll be talking about other things here. What we got here? This is a uh, Honda Civic. We just talked about those. Let's talk about the minivan. And in this picture, I have a picture of a uh, Toyota Sienna. It's white. Um, and in this picture, you probably just have the factory tent on the front windows. And in the back is probably factory as well, which really comes out to about 15%. And in the picture, you can kind of see, you can see right through it because of the light shining through the window. And, of course, there's not enough tint in the front window, so more light's making it through into the back, and it's, it's revealing objects and things inside the back. Um, my suggestion is um, if you want to keep this a vehicle like a, a minivan um, from being too suspicious, 15% in the, in the passenger and driver's side window, and then go limo all the way back. And you'll be able to sit in the, the third row seat without a problem. Um, you'll be able to even actually sit in the second row without a problem. And uh, and no one's going to be none the wiser of you. So, uh, yeah, keep that in mind. Um, what else? Gas mileage, not the greatest. We're looking at 20 miles a gallon for these things. Um, if you're a soccer mom, then you know that you can you can maneuver these things around, but they are a little bit longer. You know, they, they they actually, these actually turn pretty good, uh, sharp. They can do a nice little U-turn in them. Uh, and they got plenty of power. That's not an issue. And, that, and actually, going back to the, the Neon real quick, four cylinders, they just don't punch as fast as these other cars with six cylinders. Keep that in mind. It's not the end of the world, but it's helpful. Uh, so, yeah, anyways, that's uh, that's the minivan. Uh, what else can I tell about that? Um yeah, uh, it's like I said, not you know backing out things like that could be a, a little bit of a pain when it's because it's a little bit longer. It's not like a little Honda Civic where you're just zipping around, jumping around, you know. Uh, yeah, let's go on to the next one here. So the next one we got the uh, we got this yellow Chevy Silverado, and yes, I mean we can say that the uh, yellow is not the appropriate color for a surveillance vehicle. Um, the uh, this guy's probably got 15% tint in his front windows, and he's probably got, he's probably maybe limo in the back, which is like a the extra cab in the back. Um, as you can see, you can see right through there, because it's just a shallow, you know, there's nothing covering his windows, so there's nothing to darken the front cab. Uh, but this, again, this is, um, I don't, <clears throat> I don't like trucks because, uh, well, for, for several reasons. If it's a two-wheel drive truck, it slips around in the rain. Um, if if it's a four-wheel drive, great, and that's a whole other thing. Weather conditions are another reason why you want to get certain cars and other, than other cars. But uh, if the truck's got four-wheel drive, that's great for, like, you know, rural areas and snowy areas. That's awesome. Uh, but it also can stand out more than others. Um, so keep that in mind. I mean, I could actually just – there's so much more to say about surveillance vehicles. Um but yeah, you know, again, color. We've talked about color. Don't need to talk about that again. Let's just go on to the next one. But this isn't like overdone. This isn't overlifted or anything, so it's not that obvious. It would just be a plain Jane truck if it had the right color. Uh, the midsize SUV. In this picture, I've got a uh, Ford Escape without any tint. This is horrible. They didn't even get any decent factory tint on it. Um, but the color it wouldn't be my all-time favorite. It's a, it's like a, it's like an ocean blue, dark blue. I don't know. Pepsi Blue, maybe is what it would be called. Um, it, uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it's. I like these. They're a little bit higher from the ground, and, and you know, weather conditions and stuff like that. Uh, they they feel more safe to me. I've driven them for surveillance before. Um, uh, getting in from the front and the back again, it's kind of like it's almost like a compact vehicle, maybe a little bit more room, uh, but. Um, yeah, I don't know. If you can get a four-wheel drive, that's even better. Again, I, you know, uh, when I say um, landscape colors and in, in, in nature colors, I'm thinking like, you know, greens and browns and tans and um, things like that uh, are, are blend in easy in a sea of vehicles. 
Um, gas mileage, you're looking at 20 miles a gallon. And uh, these things aren't that long of a vehicle, so they're easy to zip around. And when I say, you know, when I'm talking about Ford Escapes, I'm talking about um, Hyundai Santa Fe's and, and all those kind of mid-size SUVs. So, um, yeah, we'll go ahead and move on from there. Uh, what do we got here? This is a, I don't even know what that is, but it's, oh, how to, I think it's how to Civic or a Ford Focus, I don't know. We'll move on from there. I'm not going to mess with that one. The Chevy Suburban. Um, I had a conversation with a guy who actually does surveillance on one of these things. And let's, so, so we'll just kind of, I'm going to rip this one apart a little bit. Um, yeah, for um, tint, tint and stuff like that, it's going to be great. Um, one of the things you can see in this car, if you look at the picture on the video, this guy probably is rolling with 15% all the way around, but it's so long that it makes the car dark in the back. Um, again, if you look in the front one, as you can see right through. Um, so if it, this likely isn't limo tint at all. Um, if it was limo tint, you wouldn't be able to see in the very back windows. I like the I like the suburban because it's you know you can do the four wheel drive thing and it's good for weather conditions a little bit higher off the ground. Um, the bad things I don't like about it is it's a very long vehicle. It's hard to back out and turn things around, and I don't care. <laughs> it's still difficult when you're trying to zip out of a parking lot real quick or you're trying to maneuver. You want something agile, and I don't foresee a suburban being like that. Um, on top of the gas hog thing, you know, what is it, like 50 miles a gallon? I mean, are you going to drive two and a half hours to a case on 50 miles? An, you know, no, it's horrible. You're going to lose money on your cases, especially if you own your own business, you know, and you're not charging for that. Um, so, yeah, that's I, Suburbans and, and you know, um, what the Ford version of it, I can't, Expeditions, wouldn't be my first pick for a surveillance vehicle. I mean, there's there's things about it that are going to be an asset, but for the everyday, I mean, you're working five days a week of surveillance, you know, commuting an hour to each way, at a minimum, this is not the car you want to be in, um, you know, use it as a backup or something. Um, let's say, let's move on to the other one. So I got another truck in this one. This has got the it's a Chevy with a king cab, and, and I have a story. I mean, if you're looking for a job and you have a truck like this, and this is your surveillance vehicle, I would not hire you. And one of the reasons I wouldn't hire you is because it's lifted. It's, you know, it's uh, it's going to be loud. I can see these big old tailpipes in the back. Um, the tent's great. It's great for you, but it's suspicious. I mean, you're going to get nailed all the time. And who are you going to follow in that monster truck? I mean, you know, you might get me around the block a little bit, but are you going to follow me around all day? No way, dude. You're, you're toast. So, um, you know. Uh, yeah, don't 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 drive around in a truck. I mean, you want to be plain Jane in all your vehicles, as far as I'm concerned. You don't want anything to stand out. <clears throat> this is just for the everyday surveillance that I'm talking about. I'm not talking about your special circumstances, and I, I don't want to hear people like, no, what about? No, there's no what abouts uh, on cars like this. They they stick out, and um, even if you're in rural conditions, um, I mean, go back to the other trucks that I was you know pointing out. Use those you know lowered. Plain Jane looking, you know, not a dent in the, in the car, you know, nothing. Just just be an everyday car. That's You're not trying to be noticed. You're not trying to be, you're trying to be invisible out there. Uh, here's a Honda Odyssey. Um, <clears throat> again, this is factory tent. You can see right through it. Uh, but that would not be the case if, uh, you know, if you had some, if you had some 15 in the front and limo in the back, it'd be a pretty awesome setup. You know, and one of the reasons why, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you guys, you know, for these vans, 15 in the front, front two windows, 15% tent, is because it, it brings a bit of normalcy to your vehicle. You know, I, when people walk by your car, because there's going to be these neighborhoods where, like, everybody walks, or everybody walks their dog, and it's just, or, you know, whatever. For them to see nobody in the front seat gives them peace of mind. When they can't see into a car, it's that it's that question mark in their mind, like, what is this car? Why is this all tinted out? And it starts, you know, making them ask questions. If they can see into the front seats, and, you know, not easily, but they can see, they know that there's nobody there in the front seats because you're sitting in the third row in the back and they can't see anything, um, it gives them peace of mind. It's like, oh, okay, well, you know, there's nobody in that car, so what do I need to be worried about? And, uh, yeah, so 
that's my surveillance vehicle spill so far. You know, just some gener generalities of, of surveillance vehicles. Um, you don't want any nicks or dents in your vehicle. Um, you don't want um, you, know, you don't want the loud colors. You know, yellows and reds and um, you know ultraviolets. You don't want that. You know, um, good gas mileage. If you can get some all-wheel drive action going on your car, that's good. Um, I'm a big fan of midsize SUVs if you get the right color and get the right tint. Um, I like the minivans. Um, you know, they've got those rocking the all-wheel drive now, and um, you know that's kind of a safety thing because not everybody, you know, you, you work cases in California. I could go into the snow. I could go into the desert. I, I need to. I need to have a vehicle that can kind of do a lot, right? Um, so you know, midsize SUVs, vans. Yeah, I don't know. You go to Southern California, maybe all you need is a Honda Civic, you know. <laughs> just rock that, just tint it out. And plain Jane color, put up your window, window shades because it's so damn hot down there. And you're good to go, you know. Um, you don't really have to worry about too much ice and too much horrible weather. Because it just, it's just so far and few between. But, uh, yeah, so that's kind of like my spiel on the surveillance vehicles. You know, I'd love to hear you guys' feedback on that. Um you know, what's working for you, and, you know, and and I don't want to, you know, it's kind of hard, like, when, you, when you're buying these surveillance vehicles, I'm going to go ahead and go back to my shot here, when you're, uh, when you're buying these surveillance vehicles, um, well, first of all, usually when you get into the industry, you don't have that choice, you have your car already, most likely, um, so just kind of keep that in mind, if you're get, looking to get into the industry, um, you want to you know, if you don't have a car or you're thinking about buying a car, keep this stuff in mind, you know, like w w what it's going to look like. And, um, you know, I might do another video where I just kind of drive around town and be like, look, you know, look at these vehicles. What do you think of them? Would you be suspicious if you lived here? This is in your neighborhood. Um, you know, it's just, just stuff to think about. And, and uh, originally, you know, uh, I, you know, I wanted to do a, a video on tint, which I'll, I'm still going to do. I, I I need to take some better pictures to reflect it on the videos or the video, uh, you know, the podcast. Um, but yeah, it's tint's important. Tint's important for protecting yourself and 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 you know what you look like. You know, so they, you know if you wanted to go into a store with them, they don't know. They don't know you've been following them this whole time. You know, there's tons of reasons why. Um, Let's see what else. Uh, so no nicks on the car, no bumper stickers, no cracks on the windshield if you can get away with it. Um, what else can we avoid? Uh, no rims, no fancy rims. Um, I like the four-wheel drive thing for safety. Uh, if you can get it, if you need it, it doesn't hurt to have it. Uh, gas mileage is always a plus depending on how much you travel. Uh, you know, like for me, I'm in the middle of the state, so I'm driving either two hours north to get to the top of the state or two and a half, you know, two and a half up, two and a half down. And it's like five hours to get to the the east coast of Washington to get over there in Spokane and, and the Pasco area. It's like three. But long story short is I, I, I've got to do that. I mean, some people only do work in Southern California, so they're just kind of like in, the, you know, yeah, they're driving a lot, but it's more traffic than anything. Um, and then, you know, in the Bay Area, of California, I'm just using this as a reference because this is where I've worked. Um, you know, you could, if you're living on the East Coast or East Bay, uh, over in Antioch, Brentwood, Pittsburgh area, um, you know, you're driving to San Francisco, it's going to take you 40 minutes, 50 minutes, Oakland, um, or, you know, you might need to go work up in the mountains, so that might take you a little bit longer. You know, it's just, it's, it's just all these little things you have to consider. So if you have the opportunity, I guess, um, you know, take that all that stuff into consideration when you purchase your vehicle. Now, if you're if you're just rocking what you have, work with what you got, man. I mean, uh, consider your tent, consider what you got to get away with, um, and then you know, do surveillance appropriately. Like, uh, you know, you have to take those your vehicle into consideration when you do surveillance. I do. Even I have I have vehicles that I'm like, okay, well, I can get away with this with this vehicle, but I can't get away with that in this vehicle. It's just common sense for me, and so. Now, you know, I don't want to give up my vehicles specific, but that's how I think. So what else is going on, guys? Well, I got uh, I just wrote an article, um, which my wife is going to do some editing for me just so I sound uh, like I know how to write, at least write well. Um, and uh, what else? Uh, yeah, I got some work coming up. So that's that's what I'll be doing for the next week or so. 
Um, and uh, I'm just going to try to come up with some more ideas. You know, I, I've got ideas, and I'm like, okay, well, does that what anybody wants to hear right now? I don't, I don't even know. Uh, but uh, oh, one more thing here. Um, and all of you that are watching the YouTube videos, thank you. Um, and I thank you guys for, for commenting and telling me if this is a good video or bad video. I need to know because it kind of sets the tone for other videos that I do. Um, but one person, you know, I wrote that, uh, I did that video on the uh, lighter camera. And uh, they were like, you know, I, I don't like it. I, I, I gave it a thumbs down. And um, I just did not think, yeah, uh, you know, Ooh. yeah, boo. Yeah, and I, yeah, this is what my all my money's going to. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I'm losing my train of thought because I say a little boo. Um, uh, yeah, so the light, the lighter video, or the lighter video, he's like, yeah, I bought one, and you guys can check out this comment yourself on the, on the uh, YouTube videos, but, um, he's like, yeah, I bought it, and he says, I wish I would have saw your video because I would not have purchased it. He's like, I guess he had problems with it, and, uh, now it's okay, but, if he had to do it over again, he would not have bought that. Um, I, I, I could agree with him more. I don't think that's a – I think that, that spy cam has too many functions that – I mean, even though it's a, if they just dumbed it down a little bit, you know, made it a little bit more user-friendly, it would be an awesome spy cam. But this whole, uh, you know, it turns on when there's voice. And, I mean, I need a better user interface to, to get that rocking. And you know, maybe it's just me, you know, but, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. So I've got a. Uh, I'm really excited about the future of this podcast, and I actually get. I'm kind of more pumped up to do it when I know that I can do a video on it, and I know that, um, you know, I can do, you know, I don't know, introductions and outros and intros and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm hoping for some better value for you guys uh, in the in the future here. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, play some out, uh, outro music here so let's see here it's going to play I don't think it's going to play oh there it goes yeah gosh I'm so unprepared I'm going to work on this stuff periodically so hopefully this get better uh, let me turn this down just a wee bit but uh, anyways guys um, thank you for uh, sticking with me through this and I hope this surveillance talk this chat helped you and uh, I'll see you guys again soon. Check out the Facebook page over at, uh, uh, gosh, Investigator Advice and Tips. And uh, also you can go uh, you can go to the Privatescare Advice website. You can go to um, the YouTube videos. You can, yeah, there's all kinds of stuff you can do, guys. So, anyways, thank you so much. And I will uh, I'll see you guys next time.